Can an athlete, yes, I know it's a very <laughs> strong word, have as much of a workout on a battery-assisted bike as a ride which relies purely on the effort of the rider? Or will the assistance given to me by this bike just mean that I get there faster but require the same amount of effort as when I ride this bike? So today on EMBN, we have a fine figure of man, Rich Pine. Rich Pine! <laughs> Pine. <laughs> Rich oh. Pine! Rich oh, stroke! <laughs> He's flipping Rich Pine! Today on EMBN, we have a fine figure of man, Richard <laughs> Payne, who's going to bury himself on a traditional MTB loop, EMTB versus MTB. Now, uh, to set the scene for this video, uh, yesterday, me and Rich did a head-to-head. -head. I was on the white E-Lite 135mm travel bike, which is a mid-assist E-mounted bike. Mm. Rich was on the Canyon Lux Flying Machine Cross Country yeah. 115, 120. Now, the loop we did was a traditional mountain bike loop. It was a blue, 250 meters climbing. Yeah, and about 10K in length. Yeah, uh, I put in, a, we won't reveal the time just yet. <laughs> Let's, suffice to say, it was my highest ever recorded heart rate. Push you to the limits, didn't we, bud? Yeah, but Rich, um, what blew my mind was the fact that you were in zone four and five for pretty much 98% <laughs> of that ride. How yeah. did you do that? Uh, I mean, I don't say by being quite fit. I, I obviously do like to try and keep fit, I train. Yeah. But yeah, essentially the heart rate sort of started probably about 110 and then just went boom, and then just stayed there for the entirety of the time. But, I mean, there's lots of descents on there. How, what, so your heart rate was still pounding on yeah, those descents yeah, as well? Yeah, it dips ever so slightly, because you try, on the descents, you try and focus on your breathing and energy conservation a little bit. But when it's such a short, sharp effort like that, it's, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't dip much. Uh, obviously, you're known for your training. You've just come back from America. You did a, did a pre- 24-hour race, yeah. 24 hour came top I just <laughs> Oh, Steve, you <laughs> Sorry. called me out. So I, yeah, come on, it's an, it's an incredible <laughs> yeah, effort to do you. that. So. Uh, like I said, Rich is very much an athlete, but the question that we want to ask ourselves is, can you actually push yourself to the yeah. same limit on a, on a mid-assist e-mountain bike as you can on a mountain bike? Yeah, can I achieve those same numbers? Well, I mean, there is only one way to find out, so that is why I'm, I'm here. So what is your strategy then? All out, just uh, the same as what it was on this one. Okay. It's, it's a, a short enough effort to know that I can just red line it the whole way around and that's exactly what i intend on doing wow yeah. wow will well, be full turbo yeah full turbo <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on wow. the limiter on each one and uh, that's that's what would be and also i mean you've got to beat my time as well right and there is that yes there's some pride there too uh rich massive respect for doing this i think uh he's about to show us that <laughs> effort effort is a mindset thing and not something which is defined oh. by the motor on your bike, right? Uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I mean, it's very easy saying it's a mindset thing. And there is, regardless of your level of fitness, I think there's a mindset thing as to determination and want. So just charging on and powering on, regardless of the amount of effort or speed, that's all relevant to yourself. But I, th I think the hard thing for you is going to be, A, is your effort above 25 kph, because yeah. that's going to be maybe a little bit more because it's a heavier bike and it's yeah. an E-mounted bike. But also knowing to keep on the limiter. I mean, you're trying to, what you're actually trying to achieve is a ride of the same effort as on an MTB. I think it's a yeah. big, big ask because yeah. simply the, you know, the bike will actually look, look after you at certain points in the track, right? It is, but I use, I'm going to have obviously my Garmin, so I'll use the metrics on there to basically know if I'm trying the same amount or not. Right. So I'll use the heart rate metrics and various other bits and bobs on there to go, well, Rich. Rich, you keep good eye on that watch, right? Yeah. Yeah. You keep a good eye on that. No, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, you know when you're on a, on a mountain bike and you've got like a tight corner, you're accelerating out, out of that, so you, you, you're maintaining the effort. Whereas on this, it's going to tick over a little bit, so it's going to keep you going through the corners a bit more, do you know? No, I, I do 100% agree, in, in all seriousness. I think the thing is, the, the key thing is, like you said, when you hit that limiter, or very near it, your mindset will automatically to be, well, there's no point pushing on, because I'm just making life unnecessarily hard uh -huh. for myself. So why not use the motor? Whereas I'm going to unhinge that part and go past it because... And do you know why? Why? Because you are unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I'll see you later. See you in a moment. Away we go. Standing up on an e-mountain bike. 
So I think Rich is about to engage in a Monaco Grand Prix on an EMTB. There's a few crowds on the track, uh, probably cheering him on, but overtaking is gonna be a little bit of an effort. Right, it is gonna be hard, regardless. We are full turbo all the time. 20 seconds in is a 165 heart rate. She won't be dropping below that. Regroup. Now, whilst Rich goes out and hurts himself on the E-Lite, which I'm pretty sure he will do, uh, these are some of the stats from my heart rate uh, when I did the loop yesterday. Now, it was actually my highest ever heart rate which I've recorded, but within that, within the five different heart rate zones, I spent uh, five minutes in zone two, four minutes in zone three, six minutes or thereabouts in zone four, but a massive nine and a half minutes at threshold. That is zone five heart rate. So that kind of goes to show you that you can actually put a workout in on an e-mountain bike. There's that power. All right, first drag of a climb. High cadence, get the most out of the motor. Heart rate check, 171. Oh, beep, beep. That's okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm definitely going to work out, people. If you ain't going to work out, you're talking. 177 still. 5k in or four and a half. Great. Rich, Yo. Uh, I have to say, you maybe don't look, look as quite as red as you did on, on this bike here. But first of all, these guys will want to know, what's your overall feeling when you ride an MTB compared to a mid-assist EMTB, simply in terms of the effort involved? So the difference, basically I have to spin a higher cadence on this to get the most out of that motor. I think it's 120 cadence to get the yeah. full 600, right? Exactly. So. That is a cadence I wouldn't typically spend that high on that bike, so that's actually quite tiring in itself. Yeah, but it can't, this bike actually, so what did you Richard say, if you spin 120 RPM on this, you get the full 600 yeah. watts of peak power, but then it does get there quite naturally, doesn't it? It's, yeah, but that's just quite a high cadence but to maintain. But it's not a mountain bike yeah. cadence. What's your normal cadence, you say, like 90? Uh, no, a bit quicker. Like really? uh, in, a, in a sort of a race mode like that, you're looking at probably 100 odds. Okay. But one, you know, 100, 110 on sprints and stuff, but up to to maintain 120, that's not something I would do anyway, I'm sure <laughs> someone pretty, can. pretty full on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was interesting. And then obviously, like we said, that as soon as you get above that limiter, this bike is is tougher than this bike so yeah, yeah you know to pedal both along the flats eh yeah as we found out in our sprint thing actually once you got up there but once you're above it exactly the normal bike is faster yeah. like it can keep going providing providing these can <laughs> but what about you know what what did it feel like when you come in and out of corners in terms of braking and acceleration so it's a good <laughs> I think I was, I actually missed some braking points because I was carrying more speed yeah. into the turns. Having actually, so much fun. I didn't say that, I said I was carrying more speed, <laughs> but I was having fun. So that was it, but then obviously, yeah, that instant, you, you have to remember to shift up the gears. I mean, you do on a normal bike mm -hmm. as well, so that you can get that high cadence to yeah. get that extra boost as would it were coming say, out. Would you say it's, it's more hectic a ride on, a, on an EMTB than it is on an MTB, simply They'd, in terms of the gear shifting and stuff like that? Do you know what, yes, in terms of gear shifting, yes. But to push a, a lightweight XC bike like that, because these are so fast, so nimble and, yeah. and lightweight like underneath you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that they require a different kind of concentration. Yeah. So they're a hectic ride, and then 
because there's a bit more going on in here, because you have to think about timing, shifting with cadence, with the motor, what the motor's going to do and get the most out of it, there's, there, it's hectic in a different sense. We'll talk about the heart rate zones when we get back into the office. And the time. And the time we can talk. <laughs> I think we can talk about the time now. Yeah, you want to know it? Now, bear in mind, Rich, on an MTB did a, was it a 20? 20, 28 and a half. 28, 28 and a half 28 minutes. Or something, yeah. I did 24 and a half minutes yeah. on a mellow ride on the E. On, the on e a ride. mellow ride. <laughs> so, Rich, I, I reckon you're good for, I reckon. I, I thought he was good for sub 20, but like on a busy I'm, day, yeah. if you did 22, that would be insanely impressive. Yeah, sadly it was not, I, I did a 24-11, so actually not that much faster, I know, but... Than your granddad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the doubt, I mean, I, well, We're, yeah, exactly. We've, we've opened a can of worms here. Rich, the, the laps have been done, the stats have been crunched. I have to say, you did look like you had a very heavy traffic loop. It wasn't during, quiet. During, uh, during half term. Yeah, but yeah you that's know, the problem. It was a problem. Uh, and I'm sure you will be, you'll be capable of going even faster. But for me, Rich, for yeah. me, this is actually a major moment in time. <laughs> oh, wow, no, okay. It, I no, mean, no, this it is, is a big it, build up. It, it really is, it really is. Because you've actually now come at e-mountain biking from a different angle, from a dis you, you've approached oh. it from a different perspective. Yeah which many of you might actually be surprised at, uh, is, you know, it's the effort that you can put into an EMTB ride if you have yeah. the right mindset. I, yeah, for sure. I mean, we spoke at the beginning, before the lap, what's, well, you know, how are you going to attack this? Attack. Balls to the wall, <laughs> wasn't it? That is basically, and that is exactly yeah. what I did. So, you know, it was on our 10 kilometer loop. Now, it just put in perspective before we begin going okay. through the stats. It's like, every, all, we all, you know, Lots of people watching this video will think, well, actually, no one's in it ever in a race to ride an e-mountain bike. Even our colleague, the Don, goes from e mountain bike ride, and he yeah. doesn't, you know, he doesn't get into zone three or four. But yeah. this proves that, like, oh, an e-mountain bike, <laughs> an e-mountain bike is an incredibly versatile piece of kit. Yeah, I mean, there's no denying it. It's not. It's just that I think. Oh, I don't know how to word this, but I think because you have assistance there, it's like, well, you. Mm, well, sure. say it, say well, it. I don't know. A you lot, can be a lazy. Lot of people, you can be lazy. A lot of people will buy it because they want assistance. They don't they want, want exactly, which is great. Yeah, okay, which is great. Well, I, but lots, know. Of, lots of lots of lots of mountain bikers. That, that's you know, you've heard it a zillion times. Oh, yeah. we're not quite ready for an e-bike yet. Yeah. Well, this this actually closes all that discussion down. Yeah, Should I mean, we, you you can be left exceedingly breathless. Yeah, I mean, say. I mean you I mean you've actually left me breathless. Uh, oh, you know, obviously by, by being sat next to you for Thank one. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> should we should we hit them with some stats then? The numbers. Now Rich, you rode your Canyon Lux, which is a cross country flying machine. It is, yes. Yeah, it's it's a mean, bike I'm very used to, so. 11 kilos. Yeah, yeah. 11 kilos. Very light. The comparison was the white E-Lite Works 140. Correct. Around about 17 kilos of the old bill kit on it, I think, but standard yeah. spec. 16.4 in a medium so this in one yeah this one is this one's probably close. i would say in my spec is about 18 kilos yeah should we go with the overall time first of all right so on the lux trail i did an overall time of 28 minutes and 28 seconds on a clear run that was yeah uh similar track conditions i'll say as well yeah, yeah. but a, a completely empty track clear run flat out this time, 24.11 on your E-Lite. 24.11, you so know, what are we four, talking, 420-ish? It, it, it's gonna, I reckon it's heading on, <laughs> if you had a clear run, it's heading on for five minutes different or a half an hour route. Uh, I think you'd get down, it'd be a 23 minute job if it was a clear run, but not to make excuses. But you know, I think it is, it's a, it is a classic trail center blue run. Yes. Half an hour, balls to the wall, as you Flat say. Uh, for me, it's this, it's, it's when we deep dive into it. Yeah. Uh, average heart rate. Yeah. 172 on the Lux. Yeah. 168 on the E-Lite. Now, I will say there that this was in, it would be, I think it would again be almost identical. I think that average heart rate on the E-Lite would actually be virtually the same. It was only because there was some quite, where I did unfortunately get stuck behind a few people on two occasions. We could actually show you on screen now, you can see these big dips in heart rate where I was unfortunately, yeah, following. Uh, whereas before it, it, it maintained a yeah. steady yeah, line do you, across. Do you know when, when, we, when we dive into the, I think what's really interesting is your, is your heart rate zones. Now obviously heart rate zones are divided into five, zone mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five. Zone four, four and five being the hardest. Yep. Um, 
I couldn't believe. I, mean, <laughs> I, take, I take my hat off to you, Rich, is that you rode the Lux pretty much 99% in zones four and five. Yeah, the whole that, ride, basically. That's a hell of a mindset. But yeah, so the Lux Trail, zone two, eight seconds, zone three, 58 seconds, then boom, the, you, you, the heart rate stays up there. Um, and that's literally, those first two lower bits are from off the start line. You're at probably 100, 110 on the start line and then it just goes Doof. So that's why you've got that minute at the beginning. Now on the e light, it's slightly, slightly again skewed. It's a bit tricky, but you've got slightly longer in that zone two at the beginning because you, I think you've got assistance there, obviously, Steve. Yeah. So you're not, you. although you can clearly see off the line, I was straight into the effort, but it just takes a little bit longer for the, full bore of the effort, if you like, to kick in. And again, where the heart dipped, or heart rate, sorry, my heart didn't just dip, yeah. heart rate dipped on following a few people here and there, that that's what sort of just brought that down. But but Rich, I mean, you're looking at 19 minutes, on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the mountain bike, yeah. 19 minutes in zone four, on the e-mountain bike, just shy six, of 17. Six, 17 minutes in zone yeah. four. That is, that might be contrary to most people's you know, perception yep. of the mountain bike. But then again, four the minutes zone five, eight minutes in zone five. What's quite interesting, Rich, I don't want to say, well, I, I actually did this loop the day yeah. before, Rich. I actually spent almost 10 minutes in zone five. <laughs> yeah. Of a 20, 24 yeah. minute loop. Yeah. I mean, I was, that, I, I recorded my highest ever heart rate. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, I was like. I mean, I, we pushed you on, because you didn't want to get beat. I also, yeah, I didn't want to get beat. No. I didn't want to get beat by an incredibly fit 30-something <laughs> who's older to be my grandson on a mountain bike. <laughs> now, for me, the zone five, and zone five refers to your, your top Maximum. band. It's your, the top band of your heart rate range. So for me, I think it's, I want to say it's high 160s uh, to sort of 190 odd sort of thing. My heart rate doesn't really go above 190 What would happen if it did? Well, you just go into zone six. Is there a zone six? Yeah. I didn't know there was zone yeah. six. Yeah. Um, but interestingly, zone five on the Lux Trail, the standard bike, eight minutes and half that time, basically, on the e bike. It just meant pure, and that's purely because I had to push so hard on the climbs on a normal bike to just try and be as fast as I could. One other thing which is really interesting, we've talked about obviously the uphill effort, you know, the technique on uphill as well. Mm -hmm. Downhill. Yeah. Monster. Way fast. <laughs> Unbelievably fast. Now, <laughs> I guess yeah. we need to treat this with care because it's 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 interpretation of what a downhill yes. is. But nevertheless, the numbers do tend to lead to an overall faster descending Hard time. Hard by what? Where were a we? A lot. A lot. A lot. A good three minutes. Now let's set the scene. The blue descent there is long, undulating, mellow. Lots of rollers. A couple of flattish and almost slightly up. We'll call them flat sections in it. Uh, Average speed, 19.4 on the Lux Trail, 28.7 <laughs> on the e Light. Mind, average heart rate though, this is the interesting one. So the effort was exactly the same. It's 170 average heart rate, and that's yeah. over 549 on the e Light, 837. Yeah. Um, do you know, I find it fascinating. There's so much I, more we could dig I, into I as think, well. I think what we need to do is actually break this down into sectors in the future again. Um, yeah, there's and, so and much. And see, but I think folks, please let us know your thoughts on this video. I think, like I said, I think it is very much a moment in time. Rich is the first athlete I've seen do like a traditional trail center loop on a mountain bike yeah. and an e-mountain bike. I think there is more in this. Mm, and uh, I, I do too. Th it makes me question actually, I'll, I'll leave you guys with this, is where does that leave mountain bikes, traditional mountain bikes, if you can do this kind of Here's, a, here's so yeah no I totally agree. However, on my normal bike I'll still outlast that e-bike. That's the big one, isn't it? Yeah, that is that's the, big, the one. big one. Yeah, but probably stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. But but you know what? You probably won't be able to do it at that intensity, right? Game on. That's all I can say there. Rich, gonna shake your hand on that. Thank one. you, mate. Nice one.